Do you ever think about leaving all your possessions behind and running away as far as you can? Yeah? Well then, you're in the right place. But what's that? Basic needs. I oh, forget that. While we're going, we will be rummaging through other people's trash just to protect ourselves from the elements. We will depend on the kindness of complete strangers to advance on our adventure, and we will fight to loosen the terrible grip of hunger on our stomachs, sometimes literally. So what's the good part? Well, you see, with almost nothing to lose and everything to gain from opening up to every stranger and every opportunity, who knows what crazy adventures may happen, or what interesting people we will meet. If this sounds like fun to you, well, join me on this adventure as I travel from Belgium to Spain, starting with literally nothing. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, of course, is to find some kind of clothing. There's quite a lot of ferns over here, which I think would be good starting material. Over there, there's some rope. I think it was left over by some scouts or something like that. Oh, man, this is, um, I'm nervous, I'm not going to lie. Anyway. Ta-da! I really hope this isn't infested with ticks. But other than that, I must say, it's actually quite comfortable. So now I'm gonna try and find some proper clothes. The best way I could think of to get some proper clothes was to go door to door asking for old clothes or hopefully finding something wearable in the streets. I don't think they're going to answer. The Embassy of the Netherlands. Alright, well, no response. Unfortunately, I wasn't extremely successful at first, as it seems most people were on holiday, or perhaps didn't want to open the door for someone dressed like a time-travelling hunter-gatherer. No reply. I then decided to improvise with what the streets had to offer me. Scraps of construction material, plastic bags. Gonna use those nails to poke some holes and hopefully it'll make some kind of makeshift t-shirt. Ah screw it. You know what? Actually I'm gonna keep this because it's um, it's a good bag for items. If I if I ever collect anything interesting I can put them in there. It wasn't quite so easy to improvise a dress out of random crap found on the streets. Finally though, someone agreed to listen to my pleas. Little by little, I managed to assemble enough pieces of clothing to look like a well-adjusted, normal member of society. <laughs> Given the fact that I chose to start in one of the fancy neighbourhoods of Brussels, I was actually probably the most well-dressed vagabond out there. Bye-bye, little tunic. Serve you well. <laughs> so far so good. Hmm, why not? Now that the matter of my clothing was sorted, it was time to start hitchhiking towards new adventures. Okay. 
Along the way, I helped a man who had broken his gearbox push his car to safety and hopped in a yellow car, which allowed me to complete a challenge for an extra 20 points, each kilometer traveled already counting as a point. Um, I'm feeling a bit hungry though, so I'm thinking about having a look for food inside these bins. So let's do that real quick once that car is gone. Apart from food, I was still missing one crucial piece of equipment, actual proper shoes. How do you like my new shoes? Pretty cool. Progress was steady, but a bit slow. At some point, I made the mistake of asking to be dropped off near an entrance to the highway, but it turns out there wasn't much traffic going through it. So, since things have calmed down a little bit since the madness of the beginning, let me take this opportunity to tell you about the awesome people who inspired me to do this sort of thing. Nars and Moots are two French guys who have created a TV program called Naked and Cheeky, where they start naked and gather stuff from kind strangers in order to travel to some crazy locations. Their crazy adventures have always been an inspiration to me because of the way they are open to others and to every opportunity to have an adventure. So it is in part thanks to them that I am now attempting to go on my own humble little adventure. It's raining a little bit but I've decided to move anyway because I saw there's a kind of um, french fries place over there and I'm going to try and maybe get some fries for free. The footage I recorded inside the snack place is unfortunately absolutely atrocious, but what happened basically is that I just asked if I could help them in exchange for a few fries. To that, the woman replied that she didn't need any help, but I could have a few fries anyway. She also asked me to not make a big deal of it, as she didn't want too many people to realize what had just happened. So I quietly accepted my fries and thanked her for helping me out. After this delicious dinner, it was time to figure out how to sleep somewhere dry and warm. I quickly noticed a nearby farm and figured I could ask to sleep in their buildings, which the farmer quickly agreed to. Oh, this is great. Cool. Well, this is going to be our home for the night, presumably. It's a nice view. So, this is the end of day one. And uh, yeah, I haven't really made much progress today. It happens, I mean, yeah, um, it's not the end of the world. Things could be going much, much worse than that, honestly. Wow. Ta-da! I'm gonna sleep like a king. The next morning, I got up in a great mood, thanked the farmer for his help, and walked to a hitchhiking spot. Bonjour. C'est vers le Luxembourg, Arlon, ou ce genre de direction. Super. Unfortunately, despite clearly specifying which way I was going, the man was actually going in completely the opposite direction. But there is actually a pretty big silver lining to this seemingly bad start. And that is that he dropped me off at a much, much better hitchhiking location. Yeah, here we are again, thanks to this guy who kind of misunderstood me and failed to read my sign, which clearly states that I'm going towards Luxembourg. There is at least a bright side to this, and that is that basically this place has a lot more traffic than where I was. Indeed, it was only a matter of minutes before a car stopped for me, going in the right direction this time. So Valentin has taken me from um, a little town towards Luxembourg, so this is uh, good progress. And now uh, he's going to pay me a uh, burger king, so that's really kind because I'm absolutely ravenous. Uh, so yeah, thanks Valentin, for your work After that, it was time to borrow a pen from someone to write my next destination on a piece of cardboard. After hours of hopping from gas station to gas station, I was getting tired and bored of all the hitchhiking. 
Thankfully, it looks like things were about to change very quickly. Ah, c'est cool. Ah, trop cool. On va à Valence, mais ah, c'est cool. So I just met these, these two people, and uh, look where they're trying to go. South, South Africa. Africa. <laughs> Hell yeah. What you left from Belgium? Yeah, yesterday. from Belgium, from the Belgium. Yes. Okay. So kind of the same as me. Bram and Arundhati were hitchhiking from Belgium to the south of France too, and despite the added difficulty of hitchhiking together instead of alone, we decided to try to hitchhike together in the same direction. I go to Barcelona, Laura go there. But this is very long, it's gonna take you, you're gonna sleep somewhere. Didi, our driver, was going straight to Barcelona, which would have allowed me to get a great distance score. However, arriving at 2 in the morning in a huge city I knew nothing of seemed like a slightly daunting prospect. Additionally, my two new friends were getting off in Valence, somewhere in the south of France. Friends are by far the most precious thing I've found today along the road, so hopping off in Valence with them was an easy decision to make. But then, let's just make sure we can actually cross this. Yeah. Do I want a blanket? Uh, sure, yeah. Mm. Oh, right. It's really not clean. Uh, it's blanket, you know. It can save. You. Doesn't smell particularly good. No, it's good. It's good. It is full of bread. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, why not? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> okay. Okay. After finally finding a way out of the gas station, Bram and Arundhati put their tent up and gave me a spare hammock to sleep in. As I fell asleep, I reflected on the day that had just passed. Progress had been great despite a difficult start, and in the end, just as I was starting to feel a little bit down and lonely, two strangers arrived and changed the mood entirely, proving once again that vagabonding in such a way can be a roller coaster of emotions and experiences. What a cold night that was. As temperatures rose again and we started moving towards the town of Valence, it was time for me to start thinking about satisfying two of the most basic needs us human beings can have, hygiene and food. The first need was tended to easily with a large public fountain and some shampoo borrowed from Bram. The second, however, would prove to be a tad more complicated to satisfy. I first asked a restaurant whether they had any leftover food that they wouldn't sell, to which the owner kindly answered that he had just opened and that he didn't really have anything yet. Then, Bram suggested we go dumpster diving, which seemed like a great idea at the time, especially when we found a pair of dumpsters which seemed to belong to an apartment block. Ah, oh, yeah, it smells of fish. Ah, shit, man. Let's look the other side. I'm gonna look the other dumpster right here. Okay, I'm gonna look here then. Unfortunately, we failed to realize that those dumpsters belonged to a supermarket. This became extremely apparent when two employees burst out and one of them knocked the crate full of vegetables out of Bram's hand. You're in the fold. Well, as you can imagine, this whole situation left us feeling not too great, at least in part because our intention was never to cause such a ruckus or to bother someone just trying to do their job in such a way. Well, that was a hard fight for one carrot. After this rather unfortunate episode, my two musically gifted friends decided to lift our spirits up by showing me the art of busking. This was a perfect opportunity to complete one of the challenges on my list, so I happily accept it. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is quite hard to sing a song the lyrics of which you don't even know or understand, which is why all I could manage was to mumble faintly in the background, much to this woman's distaste, apparently. Uh, this, of course, is not really what I had envisioned by singing in front of many people, and so I decided to not consider the challenge completed.
Espagne. Ah, mm, ah, okay. The next person to take me in his car, after this lovely German fellow, was none other than Younes. Car flipper, YouTuber, shady character, but most importantly, ready to help me, a complete stranger, as best he could. But let's not get ahead of our story. Younes picked me up in an absolutely bashed up car on a little service station halfway between Valence and Marseille. Younes's invaluable contributions to my trip started right as I sat next to him in the passenger seat. Indeed, he had some very insightful advice to offer, possibly fueled by the fat joint he was smoking. Younes assured me he knew of a perfect place to drop me off. Plenty of traffic going towards Spain, and all I had to do was to stand next to the road for a few minutes, and a car would surely stop. What I didn't expect, though, was to be dropped off on a highway exit at rush hour. Slightly concerned for my safety, I quickly hopped over the railing and tumbled down the embankment into someone's private property. Now, don't worry, this is far from the last time that we hear about my new sketchy friend. But in the meantime, I had just arrived in a large city completely physically and mentally exhausted. So, for now, my mind was set on finding food and a potential safe place to sleep that night. My strategy for food was the usual. Simply ask restaurants for leftover food that they weren't going to sell. On my second try, I was successful. Oh, merci, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Bonne soirée. Bonne soirée. Wow, oh, man. This feels good. It's crazy just how much my morale has improved since I ate. I still don't really have a plan to sleep. Although, I mean, my only plan is um, basically Younes, who was the driver of the car, who dropped me off here in Montpellier. Um, he said I could call him back and maybe he had a plan for me. But, uh, I don't know, I don't really want to put all my eggs in that basket. But anyway, whatever, I'm just fucking exhausted and um, if not, I'll just go out of town, try and find a place to uh, lay down and have some rest, whatever. So anyway, keep it posted. I then tried to collect every bit of social energy left in me to ask random people if I could sleep on their couch. It only took me asking one person to feel like that was quite enough for me and instead sent an SMS to Younes. Moments later, which felt like an eternity to me, he came to pick me up. No, I've been eating, mate. Really? Yeah. It's true. Wow. Younes suggested we go drink and smoke at the beach at half past midnight, which of course I gladly agreed to. Moments later, he casually informed me that he had a heavy criminal record in his own words. This, of course, made the encounter all the more interesting, but did not worry me in the slightest, as I trusted Younes as much as he trusted me, a random stranger he agreed to let into his car. In the end though, the plans changed and we decided to go straight to his place. Younes found me a place to sleep and assured me he would be glad to go to the beach tomorrow if I woke up not too early. <clears throat> Hello everyone. So yeah, I slept in the car that I drove in yesterday. Um, didn't sleep too bad actually. Unfortunately, it seems I woke up too early for Younes, as he did not answer my messages asking if he was still going to the beach with me. Nevertheless, I enjoyed a refreshing swim in the sea and got back on the road again. While walking towards here, I had a little idea, and that would be to try and hitch a ride on a boat. Despite being dressed like the perfect little yachtsman, at first, no one seemed to be willing to take me on a little boat trip. Although I was finally successful, it turns out the boat driver was just a guy doing the ferry service across the marina, returning from his lunch break. 
So he only really took me for about 150 meters. Well, technically that was a, a ride on the boats. Because of this, I decided to try again at a much bigger marina. But no one took me on their boat either. Ah, bah moi aussi je vais par là. Bonne journée. Finally, I decided to allow myself the technical win of managing to hitch a ride on a boat. Just got given these little biscuits by a kind stranger and a piece of cardboard to write Spain on it. So, yeah, that's really nice. After walking through what felt like miles of industrial estate and service roads, I reached a toll gate on a road going straight to Spain. And there, luck struck me. A car stopped by, going to a place near Barcelona. In the car was a mother and her two lovely kids, and as kilometers went by, we went from being strangers to friends. In fact, Vanessa, the mother, told me she was going on a vacation in a lovely place by the sea, and that I could spend the whole week with them if I wanted to. Hello everyone, and bienvenido a Tosa del Mar. It's almost the end of my challenge. I am um, in about 20 minutes. It will be exactly four days since I filmed the intro to this whole uh, adventure. And so I've decided to go down to the beach if I can figure out how. And this will be a great place to end this adventure. In a funny little twist of fate, uh, Younes just called me to explain that basically the reason why I slept in his car was because um, he wanted me to sleep in his house in a proper bed and he wanted to give me stuff but his wife wouldn't have it so they had an argument and, and yeah um, so he called me just right now uh, to tell me that he was sorry about it and um, that if I had any kind of problem I could always call him and he'd be there to help me so yeah honestly a great guy even though I must admit I was a little bit weirded out by his his car which looked really wrecked Well, I hope you enjoyed this adventure as much as I did. And if you did, well, I have many more exciting and wild adventures coming up soon-ish to this very channel. Anyway, in the meantime, see you next time. Yeah, maybe that would be interesting. Would, would you be in? That, yeah. I think you really should try it. Yeah, we have Before to try it. Okay, we're going to try it then.